My name is Mason. I'm Avion. I'm Cynthia. I'm Josh. Okay, so we're going to need some background information before we jump into it. We're doing a barbershop. Barbershop came out in 2002. It's directed by Tim Story. And some of the people that starred in are Ice Cube, uh, Cedric Entertainer, Michael Ely, Eve, Anthony Anderson, and more. Uh, barbershop had four different spinoffs with a ton of celebrity cameos through the years. Uh, most recently, a couple years ago, they had the new one. Uh, and here's a couple pictures just to show part of what barbershop culture is. This is a, a cartoon of a bunch of comedians at the barbershop because the barbershop is a place where you go for community. You go to laugh, you go to have a good time. These are clips from LeBron's HBO show, The Shop, which is a show where they sit in a barbershop and they have conversations about you know things going on in the world and just talk to each other and chop it up. Uh, you know, so it's a place you go with, with friends, a place you go to talk about sports. And then there's a picture of Barack Obama. It's also the place you go to get your politics. It's the place, it's the place for everything. Whether you want to talk about what your girl did to you yesterday or you want to go talk about what's going on in the country. So what we're going to do, we're just going to welcome y'all into our barbershop. We're just going to have a chill conversation with y'all. All right? <laughs> So, welcome to Calvin's Barbershop in year 2020. All right. I still can't believe we ain't trying to do no show, bro. Like, this is crazy. We're here. And after all these years, man, Calvin Barbershop is still right here in this house out of Chicago. From Eddie, to Ricky, to ATM. Everybody knows about the ATM. Everybody knows the famous quote, who stole my apple juice and drank it. Who drank my apple juice? Apple juice. Or, do you have apple juice? But y'all know in the barbershop, you know, we don't just we don't just sit here and cut her all day. I mean, no, we gotta we talk do. about what's going on in the world. Of course, of course, we got we gotta talk about it. All right, right, Rose Parks. Come on, speak on. <laughs> well, I'm not sure Eddie said a lot about that. He brought exactly. it up all them years way back, and it's still the truth. It's still, but let's see, let's see what Eddie said about it. Wait a minute, Jerry, 
you no more. You wrong, you wrong by yourself this time, fam. I ain't with you. I'll tell you one thing. You better not never let Jesse Jackson hear you talk about life. <laughs> <laughs> in barbershops, there, there's always that one person, there's always that one Eddie in the barbershop that, that causes a lot of controversy. So. But I mean, was he really wrong? He didn't feel like mm -hmm. he was. Because I feel like a lot of people, we have set, did sit ins, they boycotted, they did a lot of different things, but he just brought it to the attention that don't sit here and take away that Rosa Parks just did our work because she did it with more people, other people than people else. I know nobody wants to speak on it, but if we gonna talk about Claudette Colvin, mm -hmm. now she sat on that bus just like Rose Parks did. She didn't yep. give up her seat, but she ain't the face of the movement. Why? Because Rosa Parks, she was a little bit lighter in skin tone. Come on, Claudette Colvin was dark skin. Claudette Colvin was young. She had kids at a young age. You know, she wasn't the face of the movement. She was a lot more, you know, non-safe. Rosa was the safest one. We had to go get the light skin girl. You know, she mature and all tied up. Come on. Claudia Colvin couldn't have been the face of the movement. And she still hasn't got her just due. Still ain't got her just due. I think not at all. last year she was put in some Hall of Fame. People didn't yeah, even talk about, even it. about it. Years later. Years decades, later. Decades later. Not years, but decades later. Yeah. But so I don't think Eddie was lying. He wasn't. And Jesse Jackson, are we even going to talk about We ain't got to use that. That's a whole other topic. We're not going to bring that up. We're not going to bring that up. We're not going to bring that up. But, you know. Again, still they want to get offended. But it's okay. And Eddie, you know, a little bit about history. Yeah. How do y'all feel about older people trying to tell you about history? Saying, oh, y'all don't know nothing. How do y'all feel about that? Depends on the way they come at me. You know? If they come at me in a disrespectful, you know, type of tone, just like, oh, you don't know your history. Because you young and you want this and you want that. I can't sit there and I, you know, I can't take them seriously. But if they want to come at me in a gentle, understanding tone, just like you need to sit down, you need to understand your history, you don't know everything, so why are you going to try to stand up and want to earn and get, and get your respect? Then, okay, I'm willing to listen. But I feel like we can learn from everybody, though. So just like you learn from them, they can learn from us. So well, just, if I'm going to sit here and listen to you and respect what you got to say, you got to respect what I got to say, too. If, respect if they're willing. And I agree right. with if that. If they're willing. But also, the older people got to understand, we not going to react how they reacted years ago. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, like, like I said, it's based, it's, based, it's based on how you say it, not what you say, but how you say it. Of course, right. Definitely. All right, well, you know, Eddie had a big mouth, so I'm pretty sure Eddie had something to say about that, too. Of course he did. Yeah. The same day the Senate was briefed on coronavirus, David Perdue bought medical equipment stock. Then he dumped casino shares, bought vaccine stock, all while telling us the virus posed no risk. David Perdue lied to the public while he lined his own pockets.
This man respects you, but he can't respect to get respect. You know what I'm saying? See, he's done over me. But Lord willing, I'll be spared the sight of seeing everything that we have worked it for. Flush down the drain by someone who don't know no better. This ought to be the set. This ought to be said about hair salons. Now we know a lot. We know a lot of y'all women do go do do, do go to get your hair done, but y'all also do go to do do go to the gossip, right? <laughs> Talk about stuff, right? Am I lying? <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I'll sit there. Now when we talk about history. Sometimes. Younger people don't want to hear it from older people because a lot of the things that happened back in the day are still happening right now. Yep. It's like Ricky. Ricky is a barber at Calvin's Barbershop in 2002, and he had a gun. Calvin saw the gun, didn't make a big deal out of it. You know, you got to keep in mind, this is the south side of Chicago. This is not, you know, an uncommon thing to see. It's the so South Side Chicago and Ricky got Ricky got two strikes already. And talking about history, cop came, situation happened where Ricky's car was involved. Cops came and they said, you did. No questions asked. It was you. It was your car. I'm trying to figure out how you got a picture of the tag, but you don't got a picture of the driver. But hey, you did it and I'm going to just predetermine and prejudge you based off of what I already feel about you. And that's what we're going through today. Yeah. As far as racial injustice, police brutality, that's what we're going through today. And it was kind of, the movie is crazy how back then it's kind of speaking for us now because yeah. during this time of the movie, it kind of showed where Ice Cube, he was just like, you know, mm -mm, you don't have to do him like that. Like, you're being too rough. Like, that's uncalled for. And that's the same thing that we're kind of saying now, that we're standing for. Like, you know, it's uncalled for, you don't have to be so rough. You can be a little more gentle or take the necessary steps to make sure that that person is treated fairly and equally and not just like some dog. Yeah. Especially if they're, if it's injustice. Yeah. It's so crazy to see how it's like, like this movie was made 10 plus years ago exactly. and, and it still applies today. It does, it's still relevant. Yeah, still relevant. And another thing that I want to add on is that the barbershop, it is, it is the community. Yep. And what you gotta take away from it, what you have to take away from the experience is that everybody, <laughs> the lesson is, everybody, no matter big or small, your role, you got D-Ray coming in trying to bootleg everything and just sell stuff. Hey, hey, today I got this, get I got out, get out of here. Right. Hey, today I got hey, this, man, get out of here. Got two dogs, babe, one percent, one percent. Exactly, <laughs> and you don't really know what your specific role in your community means to other people. Calvin, this barbershop was in his family for over 50 years, from grandfather to father to him. And he had no care about it, no value in it. 
What do you want to go do? He wanted to sell it. I mean, well, he did sell it. Yeah. Because he didn't see the worth in it. But that's the thing. He didn't realize how important it was to the community, especially the community in Chicago. Everybody really enjoyed the barbershop. So it's kind of hard to see the worth in something, especially if the community around you is just going to, it's just in shambles. And plus also, and plus also adding that, we need a place to go to let ourselves express ourselves and then us to, us to vent to other people because 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 we don't have a lot of places in the country that's that, that's like a barbershop like like you can't go to a store and be like let's talk like the barbershop is the barbershop is literally everybody's the same everybody everybody and, and then it's the place that you can go and you can communicate you can understand your fellow yep. man better than anywhere else, probably besides your own house. That's the only other place. They go to the barbershop, they go to the hair salon, beauty shop. That's just where you can go and you can be yourself, talk about whatever it is that you want. And that's why it's so important. That's what Calvin took for granted. You don't even gotta get your hair cut. Nice. People come in the barbershop and just sit and just, just sit to there. talk. Just so talk. again, that's the lesson. Remember, your place, big or small, that you think, you don't know how big it is to other people. So. Calvin didn't understand the value of the barbershop. He wanted to sell it. He did sell it. And what he learned was, this is not just about you. It's this is about the whole community. <laughs> this barbershop not just employs people. It's not just a place where people go to get their hair cut. It's not just the place of business. It's a integral part of the community. And he wanted to go be a record producer, go be making music. No, man, you're important here. So let's see what let's see what uh what happened when he told Eddie that he sold the barbershop. conversation real quick. Now, this is barbershop talk, so this don't need a roll. <laughs> we was just saying 
a little bit earlier at the barbershop, we was talking about cheating. <laughs> I said, black men don't cheat. I never met a black man that cheated. Now, you might go somewhere and get something that you're not getting at home, but that's not cheating. That's just, you know, perusing. No, what, what, you, what you think about that? <laughs> you know you be off the wall sometimes. You just be going on the table. Exactly. What you be talking about? No, I don't know what you be talking about. I missed the barbershop. So, the let me barbershop. ask you this. So, you, you think you don't cheat it? I don't, I, it ain't cheating. It, listen, uh, I needed some. I wasn't provided that service. And I went to it. So, if you're not provided that service at home, why, why don't you, you just even? Right. Well, well, it's cold outside and I put a t shirt on, then I get a jacket. I don't take a t shirt off, do it? I take the people in the bar shop free with me. <laughs> now, <laughs> so we talk about Cardi and Offset. Mm -hmm. So you blame Cardi? You blame Cardi for that, or? All I'm saying is, if she really had to walk, you wouldn't have. <laughs> Moral of the story, Barbershop is a, basically the movie brought everyone together. Whether you was cutting hair or wasn't cutting hair, older or younger, you learned something from the Barbershop. Like Eddie said, it was an opportunity. It taught young people lesson, and it kept a lot of the black men off the streets. Mm -hmm. So, more of the story is barbershop was just a community. It was a place where you could sit there and chill and chat, just like we did here today. So, I hope you guys learned something, and you really should watch the movie, even though y'all probably have watched it before. But watching it again, it kind of just made me realize, like, a lot of things they said in the movie, it kind of goes with what we're going through today. So, yeah. Especially yeah. in a community like the south side of Chicago, you know, you could be out there doing anything. The barbershop is a safe place. You know, instead of being out there in the streets, you're in a barbershop amongst Nobody people knows. like you, people older than you, women, kids, everybody in the barbershop, in a communal environment, and just enjoying each other and being safe. And I think that's a lesson that we all can take from it. And I know that I personally experienced that. When I walk into the barbershop, Mason, what's up? Da, da, da. Yeah. You know, everybody know who I am. I know who everybody is. It's a one big family. And uh, no matter if the Falcon born or lost, we still can go in there and laugh. <laughs> the one thing um, I, I, I'm equating this is the is the, is the diversity we all have. There, there's that person at the bar shop who got who got several baby mamas. The one who married. The one who don't got kids. The one the one who just graduated. And then the, the, got the old they got the old heads in there who just be in there just being there. But you know, he got left off. Yeah. But this movie really made me appreciate it more of anything with family and community and how important and integral it is to who we are as people. Because I have the same, you know, feelings. You know, when I go into the hair salon and everything, they know me, I know them, we can talk about anything. And that's the place that I feel more at home than anywhere besides my own home. So it really made me appreciate the community that I do have because if you don't have family and community, what do you have? And the barbershop provides that. Well, Barbershop provides that. Okay. That's what's important. All right. Any questions? questions? Thank you. Thank you.